Burnout is seen across fields, but is particularly high in neurology. And a lot of programs will focus on wellness curriculum that can really vary from lectures to mindfulness training to massages. And there isn't um, really kind of a standard format to addressing burnout specifically. Um, and so at my program, we um, sought to create a program to help residents focus on identifying burnout in their colleagues and then train them to um, address their colleagues who might be burned out and how to escalate it. Um, so in order to kind of help burnout um, uh, addressing that and using simulation in order to do this. And so simulation is a really powerful tool because it's interactive, um, it's standardized, um, so everyone is getting the same experience and allows for one-on-one -on -one feedback at the end of it. So um, it's a really effective tool uh, to, for a learner rather than something more passive learning like a lecture or a handout. So I think that's part of the issue is that like we don't really talk about burnout specifically, we kind of just focus on wellness and like being well. Um, so it is important to focus on what you should be looking at for burnout. And so it can really range um, from uh, depressive symptoms to um, like not sleeping to uh, kind of declining performance at work, kind of anything that you, um, just like warning signs that you would be concerned about in a resident. Um, suicide ideation is associated with burnout. Um, compromised patient care is associated with burnout. We want to train residents to um, have be thinking about burnout and identifying burnout in the back of their mind and when they are concerned about their colleagues to know what resources that they can give for their colleagues, um, how to escalate something and when to escalate something. So it's really important, at least in our program, so the simulation allows, um, allows residents to know that there are two forms of escalating a situation, um, either talking directly to the program director or making sure that all the residents know um, for themselves and to refer their other co colleagues to, there's a house staff, um, there's psychiatric services for the house staff specifically, and that's an anonymous um, program where you can refer somebody to that or a resident themselves can go to that and the program doesn't know. And so this simulation is a way to ensure that all the residents know that if they are feeling some symptoms of burnout or they feel like a colleague is feeling symptoms of burnout that they can point them in a direction. I think it's important for programs to, in addition to talking about wellness, really focusing on burnout and making sure residents know what to look for in burnout and then what to do if they feel like a colleague is burned out. And simulation's a really great tool for that. Um, uh, so they're more active in the process and this is going to be something that they'll be dealing with at a residency level and simulation and knowing what resources to go to isn't specific for neurology. It can be applied for, to other fields um, in medicine. And with burnout being so high, specifically in neurology, um, inevitably a downstream effect of that is physicians leaving the workforce and there's already a national shortage of neurologists so this would only worsen that shortage and so it's even more important to be really aggressive and thinking about how to best really train um, neurologists starting at the residency level to help identify it in their colleagues and ensure that their colleagues are um, getting the care that they need um, in order to then become future successful neurologists and have a long lasting career.